Thank you, Mary Ann, and welcome to Good Shepherd this morning. Uh, great to have you uh, join with us as we worship. It was nice to get up this morning and shower and not feel like I was going to pass out. So, uh, good, to, good to be, uh, be uh, back uh, among the uh, living, as they say, and uh, good to see all of you this morning. So, again, I want to thank uh, Nathan Clunder, who did the... Uh, Liturgy for uh, me last week, uh, Steve Perry uh, preached at the second service. I know most of you that were here at 8 o'clock heard me preach at 8 o'clock, but uh, Steve handled things at 10.30, so thank you to both of those men for uh, helping out last week. If you are a guest or visitor, visitor to our congregation, we uh, welcome you in the name of Christ. It's great having you join your voice with ours as we uh, worship this morning. The order of service will be the Divine Service setting number four, that's on page 203 in the front portion of your hymnal. Our opening hymn is 357, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and we will stand on the seventh and final verse.
in the Father, and in the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his great grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and a servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro for this day is printed in your worship folder from Psalm chapter 85. We will read it responsibly verse by verse. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. We restored to him without our salvation, and through the labor of the nations for us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Faithfulness springs up now, and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. We will continue now in the service of the word with our Kyrie, the top of page 204. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, through John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ, you once proclaimed salvation. Now grant that we may know this salvation and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this, the third Sunday in Advent, is from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 through 20, and can be found printed on the back of the worship folder. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you, he has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst, you shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, Zion, not, Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will, who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival, so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors. And I will save the lame, and gather the outcast, and I will change shame into praise, and renown in all the earth. All that time I will bring you in. At that time I will bring you in, at the time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. The Epistle lesson on this third Sunday in Advent, as printed on the back of your worship folder, is uh, from the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses four through seven, and we will read the verses together. Then following the reading, we will rise and sing the Alleluia verse, verse on page 205. We first read, 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise.
Please be seated. Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Text will serve as base our messages from our gospel lesson. That's from Luke chapter 7, verses 18 to 28, dear friends of Christ. Did you hear what she did? She left her husband and kids and flew to Aruba? Well, I doubt that. She's not that kind of person. Did you see the device that has been invented that will cut our production time in half? Well, I have to see this, but I, I doubt it's true. I just heard on the news that President Trump didn't send out a tweet today. Are you crazy? I have my doubts, my doubts about the accuracy of that story. We can be quite the doubters, can't we? What was the latest this week? That we didn't really land on the moon? It never ends. Do you have your doubts about God? If you haven't in your lifetime, let's put you on a polygraph. You see, we have all been gripped with doubt and fear somewhere in time on this benighted sphere. That puts you and I in select company this morning. Jesus calls John the Baptist great, and he had doubts. After all, could he, the greatest of all prophets, ever claim to be without a doubt? Now John had been quite sure about Jesus. He knew he was to prepare the way. He had proclaimed Jesus as the Christ. He even baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. So now what? He is imprisoned in one of Herod's fortresses. John's future is not looking good, and he knows it. I imagine prison can do that. He also has time to ponder, and that's leading him to some doubts. He expected this Messiah to bring judgment. And all he's doing are works of compassion and mercy. Why doesn't this Messiah bring Herod down? John's faulty expectations lead to confusion and doubt. Is Jesus the one to come, or should we be looking for another? We all suffer from faulty expectations of Jesus, and we don't have to be sitting in a prison cell to conjure up such thoughts. I follow Jesus and his word, so why does this sickness linger? How can I lose my job when my family is in such a need? Why would he allow me to be at odds with my family members? Did that person need to die because they were my support system? Why would a compassionate Savior allow such things? Maybe he's not who we thought he is. Well, Jesus, well, Jesus knows exactly who he is. It is our false expectations that we put on him that lead to our doubt. Now, how did John resolve his doubts? By looking to Jesus. He sent two disciples to talk with Christ. And Jesus explains that his actions speak for themselves. He is fulfilling the scriptures as the Messiah. Now is the time of Judgment will come. No doubt, Jesus is the one sent from God as our Savior. John was right all along. Jesus is the prophet. Jesus was born of woman to become one with sinners. He became the least in the kingdom while on the cross to redeem us from sin. He has made us the greatest 
in the, in the kingdom by faith. Therefore, we can look to Jesus for assurance in our doubts. In our sickness, he heals us. In our job loss, he provides new opportunities. In our family squabbles, he can provide reconciliation. In death, he provides hope and reunion. Did John finally come to terms with his questions and doubts? We can assume that he did because of these reassurances that the Savior gave to him. These would be important to John because he would not leave that cell until his head came out on a platter. Without a doubt, he believed that Christ was the Messiah sent from God. I find this text a great study in human behavior because we put false expectations on each other all the time. We have doubts about a spouse or a parent or a child or a boss or a friend because at times they can let us down. I thought I knew you. I never expected that from you. When we continue to suffer bad judgment or vices that never go away or perpetual lying or them not, not being there when we need them, then we start to have doubt. Is this the person I put my faith in? Only to be squashed again. It hurts. It frustrates. What can I do? On the other hand, when we can count on a spouse, or a parent, or a child, or a boss, or a friend. Oh, what joy to the world that brings to trust in another, to have faith in another, to know you have their support, to know that they will be there for you, to, to have expectations that are met. You rejoice without a doubt. That's Christ Jesus for you and I. We know what we should expect from Him because He lays it out in inerrant, inspired words. The prophets write it, He fulfills it. He says it, He does it. His support is always there. It is unending. We are the blind who receive sight. We are the lame who walk. We are the lepers cleansed. We are the deaf who now hear. We will be the dead who will be raised. We are the poor who have the good news preached to them. Don't you think that's a good place to end the sermon this morning? Yes. Without a doubt. Amen. rise for our prayers. This morning I'm going to finish each petition with Lord in your mercy. Will you please respond with these three words? Hear our prayer. God our Father, your Son bids us to pray with confidence 
Give us your spirit to see you in the person of your Son, knowing that he and none other is the one who came to bear our sins and be our Savior. Encourage us in true faith and fill us with joy, knowing he will come again to make all things new. Lord, in your mercy, wise Father, your will is done without our prayer. Turn our hearts to you so that we trust your wise counsel in all things and, and trust your good and gracious providence in our daily lives, even as you bring us to eternal life. Open our hearts to all your promises that we may know your will and receive your gifts in the gospel and the sacraments in true faith. Lord, in your mercy. Kind Father, your Son gave bread to the hungry, sight to the blind, and hearing to the deaf. He made the lame to walk and cleanse the person. He raised the dead and preached good news to the poor. Help again your suffering people, the hungry, the poor and unemployed, the sick, the dying, the grieving, and all who are anxious of heart. Graciously give them all that they need for their well-being. Give them ears to hear the good news of life and salvation, and quiet their fears with your love. Lead us to, lead us to receive your daily gifts, our daily bread, with thankful hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for the Isaacs, especially remembering Angelina and Jessica as next Saturday they fly to India over Christmas. We pray that you would be with their pilot and co-pilots as they make their way halfway across the world. We ask that everything would go safely, that they would have a nice time with their family in India, enjoying the holidays together, and that you would bring them back safely to Good Shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, this morning, Lord, we pray a prayer of thanks for the 55 years of marriage you have granted to Richard and Jeanette Ross. We thank you that through the years you have been there with your grace, your mercy, and your goodness, that you brought them together so many years ago, that they complement each other, that they have a family made up of faith, and that you would continue to watch over and guide them in the years ahead. Bless them with many more years as it is your will, and continue to help them to celebrate this milestone in their life. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, in this week when we have the most darkness that we will ever have, we are reminded that the light of Christ is coming, coming and we look forward to that light breaking forth in bounteous goodness. We ask that you would hear all of our prayers this morning and answer them through Christ our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Our worship continues now at the top of page 208 with our preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless, boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns through all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death, and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. 
Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your boundless mercy, you sent your servant John the Baptist to proclaim that in Christ the kingdom of heaven draws near. With thankful hearts we pray, Come, Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood, in us to eat and drink, we receive the forgiveness of sins, and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thank you, be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace.
couple of things I want to point out. Uh, first is the uh, poinsettias. There's a sign-up sheet uh, on the table in the narthex to order your poinsettia to be placed on the altar for uh, Christmas. Uh, $8 cost. Uh, the sign-up sheet is out there also. Oh, the man, the man said that uh, today is the last Sunday also we can sign up for that. And also, uh, John and Paul Hardy are planning their annual trip to Fort Wayne uh, sometime next month for, with clothes and shoes and kitchen supplies. Uh, the details are in here if you want to check that out. Are there any other announcements? If not, have a blessed week. Thank <laughs> you.